what is the best way to surrender all circumstances to the master, good or bad, and stop worrying? <laughs> best way? I'll tell you the best way. I'll, then later on, I'll tell you the less best way. <laughs> the best way to surrender all circumstances to the master is to do enough meditation, enough withdrawal of your consciousness behind the eyes to be able to see the inner master. When you can see the inner master, when you see the same master inside you and can talk to him and have a discussion with him inside, you can then surrender, master, take over all my circumstances, all my worries, and he will take it. I want to share a personal experience. I normally don't like to, but this is very relevant. I, I heard one of the discourses of my master, great master. And it was one of the, the chanters were chanting from scripture. scripture. The scripture said, Kaya Nagar, again it's Punjabi, so I'll translate for you. Kaya Nagar, Nagar hai Niko, which is Soda Har Ras Ki Je. It's so simple. This body is a city. That's what the saying was. This body of yours is like a city. And there is like a city, a marketplace. You want to have a real deal, do it there. Soda Har Ras Ki Je. Real spiritual soda. If you want a real deal, bargain, do it, get it there. I heard this in a discourse. I was very young. I went to Great Master. I said, you talked about a bargain, a deal going on inside, and it can be done. Are you ready for it? He said, yes, I am ready. What's the deal? I said, deal means that I give you something, you give me back. That's a transaction, a deal. Okay, I am going to give you all my worries, all my problems, you take them and give me all the happiness, give me all the joy in life. And I waited for his answer. His answer was done. This happened about 70 years ago. From that day till this day, he has kept his word, I've kept mine. Real deal. You can do that. If you go inside, you can have that deal. People want to have a deal outside. Okay, I, I, I can't blame them. I tried outside too. Now when outside people come with this deal to a perfect living master, and they say, master, we want to give you all worries and give us same thing like I did. They want to copy that. And then they go away and say, I'm really worried, will it work? The worry starts moments after the deal. Who has failed? The person asking for the deal or the master? We fail. We don't stop worrying. If we really believe master has taken over and he's doing everything for you and you feel every action of yours, every thought of yours, is being governed by the master, so you can have a nice time here and a nice time elsewhere. You can get it. But then you have to have a, you, you have to do your part of the deal. So if you want to have an outward deal, the chances of your not worrying after that are very remote. If you want to go inside deal, chances are very good that you'll get a real deal. And you lead a totally different life. In life, you'll be on top of the world all the time. Because master taken over all your worries, taken over all your problems, he's taking care of them. And you can see them. He's taking care of it. These deals are possible. And it's nice to reach that point. Great master used to say, Baba Savan Singh, that the initiates who get initiation, namdan, or are accepted by a perfect living master, during the lifetime of a master, because master will die. We will also die. Everybody dies. During the lifetime of the master, do so much meditation that you manifest the radiant inner form of the master while you're still alive. 
if that happens and the master dies physically, he'll be sitting with you telling you, I'm not dead. He'll be more alive. He'll be more available to us. So that's some, some kind of an urgency on this path. If you were to ask me, is this something urgent? I, normally I say, no, take your own time. We have been here millions of years. What does it matter if another couple of lifetimes? It doesn't matter much. But if you are serious in going back to your true home in this very lifetime, not want to give any chance for another lifetime, then you should do as much meditation as possible to manifest the radiant inner form of the Master inside you, where you can talk to the Master and become a friend like you are a friend outside. If that happens, you have the Master at all times with you. He will never die for you. That's better. And we don't realize that you can get the radiant form of the Master even after he dies, because he is manifested at the time he initiates us or gives us his yes, accepts us. That's the moment when he is accepted, he is with you. But to be able to see and to be able to talk to him takes care of the doubts and worries of the mind. And that's why it's a good idea to meditate enough, even if you have to give a lot of time. Even if you, even if you have to divert your proper priorities and make this highest priority in life, number one priority to meditate and get to talk to the Master inside, it's worthwhile. You'll never be without the Master. I mentioned the story the other day about a famous mystic, famous saint, Muslim saint, Sheikh Farid. Sheikh Farid Uddin, Sheikh Farid Shakarkandi. He had his master whose name was Kutbuddin, Sheikh Kutbuddin. And Farid had one son. While Sheikh Farid was still being guided by his master Kutbuddin, he was telling his son, Son, get initiated, get accepted by Kutbuddin. He is getting old, he might die. Better go and take the advantage. The son, like most young people, was saying, no, Dad, you know, it's my young life. I have to still lead my life. One day I can go and get the spiritual stuff. So he kept on putting it off. One day Kutbuddin died. And his body was lying there before they were burying it. And Farid's son came up. He saw that the Kutbuddin's body is there. He immediately shaved his head off, which was a requirement in those days for following somebody. And he put his head on the feet of Kutbuddin's body. Farid is standing next to him. Sheikh Farid says, son, this is the body of one I have adored, followed all my life. I don't know anybody else that I loved more than this, this person whose body you're putting your head on. But sorry, it's too late. There's nothing in the body. Master's gone. You come too late. Even one second is too late. Take advantage of the living master while he's alive. One minute is too late. If we could get benefit from a master who's already dead, we are only getting advantage of talk, talking to our own mind. Master is not there to talk to, to us or tell anything to us. Even as a human being, one human being to another human being, we are getting no guidance, getting no answers. That is why he said it's very important. So great masters advice to us that you try to get this, take your meditation up to that point, then relax. Because then you have nothing to worry about. You get your deal right there, all worries are taken away. You never have to worry. And by the way, worry is quite a useless thing. I went to a church. It was church of see, John the Baptist. Some church I went and there was a notice outside. I read it. It said, worrying is praying for failure. I like that. And then once I, I, once I organized a group to study what we worry about. So I asked the group to write down what do you worry about. And they wrote down. I said, now turn the page and tell me how many of those things you worried about actually happened. Not even one. They were worrying about things that never happened. 
and worrying is about oh this could happen this could happen that can happen that's worry and most of those things never happen and if one or two happens and you are worrying 20 times more what good is it worry doesn't solve any problem so stop worrying and start living be happy and don't worry he said king janak i don't need your body i don't need your wealth and certainly i don't need your mind i have plenty of trouble with my own but i showed you that you get these things when you are not attached to your body to your wealth or your mind when you're not attached you get instant knowledge now you have seen what i've given now you practice meditation in about 20 years you'll get it again that's a slow process that is how king janak got his instant knowledge in this story we get the simple message that these are the attachments we have first to our body then to our wealth and then to what we think and our attachments and that's all that is holding us back from enlightenment if we could free ourselves from this we would be enlightened the 20 year practice that king janak had to do after that was just to practice slowly steadily to get exactly to that point so we are in the same state if we don't if we cannot surrender they say surrender is the short shortest cut to spirituality if you surrender to a perfect living master after being sure he is a perfect living master you surrender you get enlightened the gurbani itself says the same thing nanak satgur bhetiye puran hove yukti if you can surrender to a master your yukti is complete your effort is complete that's all then what what happens hasdeya khadandeya kherdeya ucche hove mukti then you can live your life as normal and you'll get salvation the power of surrender that means everything is now being done by the master not by you everything every action of yours is being done by the satguru by the perfect living master if that can be done your job is done finished what is coming in the way of the shortcut here we are they are telling us a shortcut why is it difficult to surrender and what all can we surrender we can surrender our body we can surrender our wealth we can surrender our mind then what is left what is left is to surrender the surrenderer he is still there the ego is still there i have surrendered my body i have surrendered my wealth i have surrendered my mind and i am still there there is no place for two in total surrender in real surrender it's either i or satguru you can't one or the other they say in this sword the sheath that which we put the sword only one sword fits in either i or him you make a choice so when you do that then surrender is the shortest way there is a saying in punjabi jahan aasa tahan vasa wherever your desires are you go there ultimately which is true because that is how the karmic pattern works it works on desires and attachments and coming back again and again because of our desires but supposing your desire is to be with the master supposing all your desires are now finished because one big desire has come to be with the master everything else is included in that what will happen you will go where the master goes period where is the talk about meditation then 
way they talk about effort, do this, do that, that's, that's also surrender. When all other desires can be put away, only one desire is left. And that, wherever master goes, you will go. Just by the simple principle, that wherever you are desiring to go, you will go there. So these are, in the middle of these texts telling us what to do, are also these little shortcuts. And we ignore the shortcuts because of our ego, before, because of our mind. But if somebody is brave enough, is a warrior, warrior against his own mind, he can take a shortcut and have to do nothing else. The teaching of meditation is a means, not the end. Our true home from where we came originally is our destination, not meditation. Meditation is a means to find out what these people are saying, is it correct? To satisfy a doubting mind, I am doubting if anything is real, is it really correct? Can I go in and find out? That is why meditation is merely a means to validate that there is something more and we don't know how much more. We just find out some few, few experiences and we are satisfied, yes there is something. Very often Perfect living masters help us by giving a glimpse of something internal. And we, we are sure this was internal, this is, there is another world, we belong somewhere else, this is not our world. It's a good glimpse. And we think now we got a glimpse, we can get it every day and we don't. Every day we try and we don't get the same glimpse again. And we go back and say, Master, I had a very good experience once, how come I don't get it again? So that was just a sample to convince your mind that there is something, keep going. It doesn't mean that you have really achieved anything. It's just a validation, the very purpose of meditation, to validate there are other things inside you which you don't know about and you can find them out as a human being. So that is why Masters give us glimpses sometimes and then that builds a certain faith, a living faith, because you've seen something. Not a belief system. Here's a big problem, that we believe in things, not know things. Knowledge is very different from believing. Religion has done a disservice to us by emphasizing belief rather than knowledge. To know something is different from believing something. You believe something you haven't seen. All religions require us to believe. Have faith, believe. That's totally blind faith. And blind faith has no place in true spiritual practice, in true spiritual journey that we take within ourselves. That is why, in a way, Religion, instead of helping us to go within and find the truth, has sometimes been a handicap, a hindrance, because of the pressure on us to believe things, believe things which we don't have any validation. Spiritual path was the beginning of all religions. If you look at the teachings of all the founders of religions, they have not said believe things. They have said Go within and find out. All of them have said go within and find out. And religion does not say go within. Religion says support the buildings outside. Support the church, support the temple, support the mosque, support synagogue, support these buildings we are making outside. And come and sit in the buildings. Come on Sundays. Come on Fridays. Do this, do that. All external. Where is the original message gone? to go within and find out. That was spirituality. Now we go into rituals, ceremonies. So that is a sort of a disservice to spiritual seekers. And sometimes this belief system can be so strongly enforced on us by parents, by society, by church, by temples, by these rituals, that we are not willing to accept even our own inner experiences, rather stay with the belief. So that is why believing is not knowing. 
get to know what's inside get to know yourself get to know what the truth is get to know the creator inside you that will be knowledge so that is why it's very important not to have any blind faith if you want to be on this path great master used to emphasize this point that blind faith is a statement made by somebody on his or her experience and you believe it that's not your experience it's somebody else's experience you are relying on spiritual path requires you have your own experience no matter how little no matter how long it takes it should be your own experience and rely on your own experience i am sure that many of you have also tried these things and what i am saying would be resonating with you because you have come from different religions different societies preaching things just to believe and that is why i am pointing out that the teachings of this great master which i am sharing with you i am sharing it purely out of service seva to my master i am not sharing it because i want to propagate something or want to start something i am merely sharing because of my master's permission to share and help people with his teachings his teaching is very clear that blind faith has no place in spiritual seeking and have your own experiences that is why i'm sorry you missed out 45 minutes of meditation in the morning <laughs> it appears to me that people who want to go on the spiritual path often wonder why is it such a difficult path if the whole intention is to find your true self within yourself it should be the easiest thing possible why don't we go in and find what is there what is stopping us when we look at this question carefully we find that what is stopping us is that we have lost the ability to withdraw our attention within ourselves simply because we have been practicing the exact opposite which is focusing attention on things outside when we focus attention on anything we move away from ourselves to the thing upon which we are focusing our attention it could be an object can be a person can be a situation can be a thought when we are putting our attention on something other than ourselves it means we are moving away from ourselves withdrawal of attention brings us back to our own self and that is why because we have got so habituated to focusing attention outside we have lost the way to withdraw our attention to ourselves that is why it becomes so difficult to just go within many people try to go within by meditating by closing their eyes imagining their insight but they are so used to imagining things outside of themselves that even when they try to imagine themselves they make a picture of themselves sitting in front of them in the darkness created by closing the eyes that is why it is not possible to draw attention to your own self in any easy way even the meditation we perform is taking our attention outside how to withdraw attention to yourself very difficult is there a easy way <clears throat> a way that has proved successful excuse me is there something more simple <clears throat> for a simple thing like going within or finding our true self or what we call finding our true home i was seeing that there are so many saints and mystics have come they have declared that the truth is inside us jesus calls the kingdom of god as kingdom of god within us find it within ourselves all these mystics of different religions who founded those religion also say the truth lies inside us <clears throat> if that is so 
Isn't there in the scripture something that should simplify this question? How do we go with it? How do we get salvation? How do we get freedom from the bonds we have created by attachments over here? When I was going through several scriptures during my study of comparative religion at Harvard University, I remember I came across a very short two-line verse from the sixth scripture, Sri Guru Gansa. And so far as I can remember the words, I try to recall and repeat, they were very simple. They said in Punjabi, in Gurmukhi script, Nanak Satgur Bheti Hai, Puran Hove Jukti, Hansandeya, Khyandeya, Pilandeya, Pandeya, Vichche Hove Mukti. In translation it means, Guru Nanak says, that if you are willing to surrender to a perfect living master, a Satguru, you can then live your life as you are living, eating, drinking, dancing, laughing and obtain salvation. Nothing could be simpler than that. That the only thing required is surrender to a perfect living master, not surrender to any master. Guru Nanak doesn't say that if you are surrendering to a Guru, he says Sat Guru. What's the definition of a Sat Guru? Let's go back to Guru Nanak himself. At another place in Sri Guru Granth Sahib, he says, Karme kar dikhlaye de so Sat Guru Purak Sajan. One who can show you your true home within this home, consider him as a true Guru, Sat Guru. So both definitions put together means that what he is suggesting is that if you find somebody who is a Satguru who can show our true home to ourselves, surrender to him and you will get salvation. He does not talk of meditation. He does not talk of all the dietary restrictions that we have to follow when we follow these masters. He does not talk of anything except surrender. Now, he is not the only one saying surrender. Surrender has been recommended by most of the mystics. Surrender to the master, surrender to the Murshid Kamal, surrender to the perfect living master and you will get everything. Why do we need meditation then? I have gone over this question many times in my own head. Why do we need meditation if all you need is surrender? The answer came simple, the mind does not want to surrender to anybody. And why should it surrender? The question is, why are you asking to be surrendering to somebody else when the truth you are trying to find is within yourself, not in that person? Why are you asking a surrender to another person? Normally, when we look at this proposition to surrender to somebody, if you notice, that is how cults are created. And those are dangerous cults that you cease to think for yourself and give your decision making to another person. Very dangerous. And we know how in cults people have, many of them committed suicide. Many have been killed by these very people who run those cults. How can we avoid a situation where we create a surrender to a perfect living master without creating a surrender to a cult, surrender to something that we are surrendering to another man to make our decision. It's not a very good idea. That is why the mind, the thinking mind, the rational mind, the logical mind will never surrender to anybody. And it's very appropriate. The thinking mind says, if I can think for myself, I don't need somebody else to think for me. Especially these days when we know all of us are equal. Democracies run on that basis. Governments run on that basis. We are all equal. And if we are all equal, why should one person surrender to another? Doesn't make sense. That is why we go to the second option. Surrender not possible. Let's do something which will enable us to surrender. And that is deep meditation. Effort. Lot of effort. So we are willing to make a lot of effort. That goes with the grain of our mind. 
our mind is already trained you can achieve nothing except with your effort nothing can be obtained in this world without your effort and you can't sit home and say without effort you can get anything therefore it appeals to the mind if i am going to work for my salvation within myself that makes sense to me therefore i am willing to meditate and find the truth i am not willing to surrender so that very simple option we dismiss and we go into the longer more difficult path of trying to meditate of course meditation does validate the truth that everything is within ourselves we know that we are <clears throat> only the physical body outside meditation in the simplest form helps us to know the body is a temporary cover upon ourselves that we have an inside self which lasts longer than this body which was there even before the body is born that meditation and that is not very difficult at all all you have to do is close your eyes imagine who you are not make a picture of yourself imagine who you are can you blink your imaginative eyes inside with your outer eyes physical eyes closed if you can do that you have discovered your inner self 